Roblox recently expanded their audio API that can allow us to do some really cool stuff with them, such as we can manipulate our voice chat to have different filters within the game, which I think is actually really, really cool. There's a lot of filters, There's a lot of filters that we can go through with, and I will give credit, credit to the, to the person, person who created this game because this is a really cool thing, thing to discover. We can have multiple speakers playing the same audio at the same time. If I drag my listener closer to here, we can hear it better. If I drag out of it, go to this one, it's playing the same song and we can also hear it very clearly the closer the listener gets. And one of my personal favorites that I've created is speaking so that an NPC can follow me. Hey, noob, get over here. Yeah, that's right. He's following me. As soon as I start speaking, he's going to continuously follow me as I continue speaking. I'm over here. I'm actually over here. Dude, how insane is that? This update is so cool. So yes, this new audio API adds 15 new instances to it, and we can do a whole bunch of cool things with them that include voice input, multiple listeners, effects, and in-world microphones. So based on the examples that I showed you, we were able to do all of this using the new API. And some of these instances include all of these different things here, which I'm gonna go over some of these inside of this episode and kind of just break down everything that I've been able to discover from this new update up until this point. I recommend wearing headphones for this video so that you can really get to see the difference when it comes to the audio. And with that being said, let me show you more of what I've got in store for you for this video. All right, let's think about this for a minute. I'm gonna show you an example of how the new audio structure is formatted uh, in the most simplest way possible so that you can understand how the stuff works because I know it definitely trips up a lot of people. Okay, but let's say we have a sound or piece of music that we want to produce in the game and we want to be able to listen to it. The first thing we would need to do is get an audio input so that we know that this is a sound or music that we wanna play. So this is basically what it looks like right here. We have an audio player but this can also act as audio input. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as we know that there is sound coming from somewhere. And in this case, it's gonna be coming from an audio player because we want to play music. Now, we have the sound, but how do we actually project this sound or music or whatever it is? We send this to an audio emitter is what this object is called. And we can kind of think of this as a speaker. So you pretty much know that sound and music can come from a physical speaker because uh, that's where we're able to hear the sound coming from a speaker, also known as an audio emitter, uh, that's being played from an audio player. So we have this structure so far, but that's not the only thing that we need, because what happens if we just use an audio emitter or the speaker to project sound, it's just going to project the sound into the world uh, with nobody to listen to that sound. So what do we need to do? we need to add an audio listener, but you may have noticed that these two are not linked together. That's because an audio listener uh, simply just needs to listen for a specific sound coming from this audio emitter as long as they're in the same audio group. Now, I'm gonna introduce you to that later in this episode, but basically, this audio listener, we can treat this as our ears. So our ears listen to sound and music. So when we hear music coming from this speaker, that's how we're able to capture the sound to know that this is where we're hearing the music from. And finally, what we do is we link this audio listener. So we have the, uh, the music or sound or whatever, and we link this to an audio device output so that we can actually hear the sound in the game. This is a basic structure of how you play music thinking about this in terms of how the new audio system works. And it's kind of difficult to get your head wrapped around it at first, but I'm gonna show you what this looks like in Roblox Studio, so we're gonna be able to implement this. So I hope this part made sense to you just a little bit. Okay, so we're now gonna try implementing what I just showed you with the previous model that's shown right here. Uh, that basically allows us to have an audio player with a certain song, and we're gonna be able to project it in the game uh, by doing so. And the first thing we're going to do is try and look for a song inside of the audio marketplace. It really doesn't matter which one you use. So I'm just going to insert this one that I just found right here. So I'm going to hit insert. Uh, so it's going to be inserted on the right side of the screen. What I'm going to do is copy the sound ID. So I'm going to uh, click on this, hit control C. And then what we're going to do is actually delete this because we're not going to use the actual sound. We're trying to create our own sound structure. So what we're going to do now is make a folder so that we can organize our structure. So I'm gonna create a folder, 
gonna call this one audio player example. I'm just gonna call it that. And what we're gonna do now is click on the plus sign. We're going to add an audio player. So if we hit the plus sign, we're going to hit audio player. So this is what it looks like right here. So we're gonna do that. And then once we go into this audio player, there's a bunch of properties here, but the thing that we're most interested in is this property called asset ID. So we're going to click on this, gonna paste our asset ID, and it's going to say that it's ready and it updated the time length automatically for us to uh, do so. I'm also going to turn on looping so that we can constantly hear the song uh, while the game is running. Uh, so we now have our audio player, which basically tackles uh, the first step right here. But now what we need next is an audio emitter. So I'm going to structure this audio emitter uh, by using parts like we've done over here. So I'm gonna to go to model, I'm going to hit part, and this part I'm going to call emitter, and I'm going to put this inside of the audio player example. And I'm also gonna change the color so that it's distinguishable from the other ones. I'm going to make this lapis. Okay, so now we have our emitter. What we do now is we insert inside of this emitter uh, an audio emitter and this is what it looks like. So we're gonna click this. This is our audio emitter right here. And now here's the important step that we have to do. So you noticed in our model, I linked these two together using an audio player and an audio emitter. But how do we actually link these two together? We use what's known as a wire uh, to connect these two together because that's pretty much how audio works in real life. You connect multiple sources of audio together so that they produce sound. So that's basically what we're gonna do here. Uh, what we're gonna do is click on the plus sign on audio emitter and we're going to search up wire. So it looks like this. And on this wire, we need to make sure that our source instance and target instance is accurate. So our source is basically going to be where the sound is coming from. So the source, we're just gonna click on this and we're going to select our audio player because this is basically where the sound is coming from. And we want to send this sound over to our target, which is going to be our audio emitter because this is where uh, the emitter can produce the sound and make it project into the world. So now that we have that, what we need to do is insert an audio listener and we're going to make another part specifically for that. So I'm gonna insert a part right here and I'm gonna call this one the listener and I'm going to insert this inside of the audio player example. So we're going to hit the plus sign here and then we're going to add an audio listener. Okay, and so now we have an audio listener that's waiting for us to hear the sound. But how do we know which sound we're trying to listen to specifically? Because there can be multiple audio listeners, there can be multiple audio emitters. So how can we tell the difference? What we can do is set this property called audio interaction group to basically tell us that this is the right audio that we want to try and listen to uh, from this emitter specifically. So we're just gonna call this um, music just for just for simplicity's sake. And so we're gonna do the same thing down here with audio listener. We're just gonna call this one music. And finally, we need an audio output. And you can put this audio output wherever you want, but I'm gonna put this inside of the audio listener. So I'm gonna hit the plus sign. I'm gonna add an audio device output. So basically this thing right here. And then I'm going to hit the plus sign here, add a wire so that we can link the audio listener to the audio device output so that we can finally hear the sound coming from this uh, part specifically. So this is going to be the listener. I'm going to make this one red so that we can tell the difference between them. And this is pretty much our basic structure for uh, our audio player. But obviously we need to be able to play the sound. So I'm just gonna add a simple script inside of our audio player. And what we're gonna do is say script.parent colon play open and close parentheses. And that is basically all we need to do for that. So that is how we structure our audio player. So now let's go into the game and hit test and hit play to see what actually happens. And once again, I recommend having headphones on so that we can really see the difference here. Okay, so our music seems to be working as expected. We have the emitter and we have the listener. But let's see what happens. If I go into the server side, I'm going to move the emitter this way to the right just a little bit. If we go into the game, we can now hear that the listener is on the left side of this speaker, which is why we're hearing more of the sound coming from the left side than the right side. And if we move our speaker this way, 
uh, to the left this time, and our listeners on the right side, we can hear more of the sound coming from the right side rather than the left side. And this is really fascinating, because like this gives us more control over um, our audio levels, where we uh, project the audios, where we project the audio from, and all that sort of stuff. And if I bring it closer, and if I bring the two closer together, like they are basically synonymous with each other, then you can hear it very clearly from both sides of our ears. So that is a really basic example of, of an audio player, and I think it's really cool. Okay, now I did show you uh, one of the examples at the beginning of this video where we were able to create multiple speakers with the same listener and they were, they were both playing the same song at the same time. Uh, it's really easy to implement this once we have the structure going on. All we really need to do is just uh, take our emitter, duplicate it, and then make sure that our uh, wire is connected to the audio player uh, with the right target instance of the audio emitter. So the only thing we need to update is this target instance to be uh, in correlation to this audio emitter right here. And so now we have two speakers playing the same song at the same time. So if we go into the game now and see this change, we can see um, that it's working basically as expected. Okay, so we're now listening to the music. We're right here in the center with our listener. If I move the listener closer to this speaker, then we can hear music coming from this. And if we decide to move it to the right side, then we can hear that it's a little bit louder on the left side because our listener is really, really close to this speaker on the left side. But then if I move this over here, this listener is really, really close to the right side of this speaker. So that's why we're able to hear it more clearly on the right side. Again, it's very fascinating, but it is hard to wrap your head around uh, if you're new to all this. But I hope that this gives you more insight into into the possibilities of creating your own audio structures in Roblox Studio. Okay, now I'm not gonna go in depth with filters and effects that you can add to audio, but I definitely do think it's a cool thing to experiment with. So if, if I'm in this place, this place is basically made uh, for demonstrating this new audio API. Um, we basically have uh, the ability to add effects to the sound that's currently being played right now. So we can add a pitch shift effect, that adds pitch to it. We can even reverb it, and then we can add an equalizer, and we can also add a distortion to it. So these effects are pretty cool. You basically need to create uh, an effect for each in individual one, and you need to link it to the audio emitter, and that's basically how you manipulate the sound using it. So again, I'm not gonna go too deep into detail with uh, effects, but these are still really cool features to have uh, and to consider when you're manipulating audio in Roblox Studio. All right, and the last thing I'm gonna show in this video is how I was able to use my voice, uh, basically my voice chat, to be used within the game so that there can be certain things happening, like this NPC following me uh, every time that I chat within the game. It's a really cool feature. We can now use our microphone to interact with the game world, because before, uh, our voice chat was basically used to communicate with other players, but this new audio API allows us to interact with the world using our own voice, which I think it's very, very cool. So I'm going to show you a little diagram of what I did, and I'm going to show you a little bit of what I did with the scripts so that it can give you so that it can give you a bit of an insight to know more ab about how this audio API works. Okay, this looks kind of confusing, but I will try to break this down to the best of my ability step by step. What you're hearing right now from me is the audio coming from my character uh, rather than my microphone that I normally use to record these videos because uh, there's audio coming from my character, but there's also audio coming from my microphone for recording this video, which is why I had to mute it. Um, but basically, what we have going on here is uh, a structure that looks similar to what we worked with before, uh, using an audio player. So you might have noticed that we have an audio device input instead of an audio player. Uh, everything else here seems relatively the same. We have the audio emitter, we have the listener, and we have the audio device output, but things are just a little bit different. So I'm gonna try and explain to you what the difference here is. So we need to try and figure out where is the source of this audio coming from? Uh, in our previous example, it came from an audio player because we wanted to play sound or music coming from uh, the Toolbox's marketplace. But this time, what we want is an input coming from our microphone uh, 
from our player. So pretty much our audio device input is a more general term for getting an audio input from somewhere because before it was the audio player, but in this case, we want it to come from our player. And so if we open up our players and open up our player, we can see that there is, well, there's supposedly one audio device input, but there's two of them just for testing purposes. So I want you to imagine there's just one. This is the audio device input coming from our player. But now what we need to do is we have the sound, but we need to be able to produce this sound and project it into the world. This is where we need to use our character. We're going to put this audio emitter, uh, also known as our speaker, inside of our character. So if we go to the workspace, open up our character, we can see that there's an audio emitter, just pretend that there's one, uh, that has a wire that connects our input from our player to our character. So I hope this part is making sense to you so far. Like we're basically taking the, the, the voice input from our player and we're going to project this onto our characters. So that's how you're able to hear the voice coming from my character right now. It's because we have an emitter that's producing this sound and it's coming from my character. But now that we have that, we need to have a listener, of course. And so we basically have an audio listener that listens for this audio coming from our character. And if you remember, we use an audio interaction group to specify which sound we're looking for specifically. So once we have that, then we're able to use an audio device output to be able to actually hear the sound that's being produced. And in this case, our audio listener is inside of our character and our uh, audio device output is also in our character, but specifically in the audio listener. So this is how we're able to take the player's voice, uh, project it onto our character, and then listen for it, and then hear it on our character. But here's one interesting thing. You might notice that we have what's known as an audio analyzer. You might ask, what the heck is an audio analyzer? This basically tells us that we can measure our audio to know how loud or how soft our uh, input is. In this case, how loud or how soft my microphone is. So this is how I was able to whisper so quietly so that uh, the NPC couldn't hear me. But then when I shouted really loudly, that's when the NPC was able to pick it up and then move over to my character uh, because we were able to use an audio analyzer to analyze this. And I basically took this audio analyzer and I connected it to our uh, microphone input. And so with all of this, we have a structure that allows us to do all these sorts of things. Now, again, just from this analogy alone, you might be sort of confused with it, but I highly recommend going through with this and just experimenting because experimentation and struggling through is what's going to get you to learn how this stuff works. But with that being said, I'm going to show you what the scripts look like so that we can actually see this in action. Let me try and break down the scripts for you so that you can see how I was able to incorporate this new feature inside of my game. Um, and the first thing I'm going to introduce to you is the NPC itself. So this NPC has two scripts. One of them is animating and the other one is follow player. Animates basically just so that the character can actually move around in the game and stuff. But let's look at follow player. So if we open this up, we can see that this is referencing something inside of replicated storage. So if we go to replicated storage, let's open this. We, we can see that we're using an unreliable remote event called NPC follow. And this is basically going to capture any firing that happens onto the server uh, so that we can make the character Character, or we can make the NPC move to wherever the character is, also known as our player, inside of the game wherever it is. And then we're just going to wait until it finishes. So right now, this seems to be pretty self-explanatory. It doesn't seem to be too complicated right now. But let's go outside of here. And what I'm going to show you now is the main script that basically allows us to have all of these things hooked up onto our players so that we can incorporate this uh, audio design into our game. So this is gonna be a local script called Radio Chat. I mean, I basically just took this from uh, that default starter place uh, that represents uh, the, the new audio, uh, but I modified it myself so that it uh, can work with what I'm trying to do here. So basically, 
uh, what's happening is let's go down here onto on player added. So we're creating an audio input device and putting this inside of our players. So basically this first step right here, adding the audio input device, uh, trying to get the player's uh, microphone. Uh, and so we're also going to make an event every time the character has spawned into the world. So we're gonna go up here, we're gonna go into on character spawned. And what we're doing now is creating an audio emitter and putting this inside of character. And we're also setting the audio interaction group to something called NPC follow. Uh, so basically it's this right here. We're basically putting this inside of our character so that we can project sound onto our character uh, whenever we get the input from the player's microphone. We're gonna project it onto our character. And then we basically use this helper function called connect, which basically just creates a wire uh, that takes in um, the source and then the destination. So that's how we're able to create this line, this linking together using a wire. It's a pretty useful um, helper function. So that's what we're gonna be using. Uh, but this basically takes in uh, the microphone input, which is the source. And we basically made that down here, which is inside of our player. Uh, and then the emitter that we just created that's inside of our character. So then the next thing is we're gonna create a listener and we're also gonna put this inside of the character. We're going to make sure the audio interaction group is the same as our emitter uh, so that we can listen for the audio emitter, but not directly using a wire or, any, or anything like that. We don't need to do that. Um, but then we're going to create a device output, an audio device output and put it inside the listener and then we're going to connect the listener to the audio device output. Uh, and then so what we do now is we basically create an analyzer, we set this up inside of our character, uh, and then we connect our microphone input to the analyzer that we just created that's inside of our character. So that is another final step that we have to do for that. So now we have the hookup. What we need to do is basically use a while true do statement to constantly check if uh, I'm talking inside the microphone, we use the analyzer to detect if my voice is loud enough uh, to then basically use this NPC follow uh, unreliable remote event and fire it so that we can use the uh, NPC's follow player script to then follow my character wherever it is inside of the world. So that is something that we uh, pretty much do with our script. So if I go back, we can see that with our while true do statement, it's going to constantly say that there's no sound being produced. But once the analyzer picks up our RMS level to be anything higher than 0.1, so that's when I'm like shouting and stuff like that. Um, because zero is like no sound is being produced at all. 0.1 is like the bare minimum. We're going to fire the NPC follow. It's going to be sent to the follow player. And then the NPC is going to follow our character. So that is basically how it works. And that is the basic rundown of how the script works. So if I go into the game, that's pretty much what it's going to be like uh, where the NPC is just going to be uh, following me. And that is the basic rundown of how I was able to script this inside of Roblox Studio. And I honestly think it's very, very fascinating. Now, here's my recommendation for if you're adding your own audio structure to your game. I definitely recommend having some sort of diagram or structural layout so that you can visually see how all of these audio objects are are connected with each other. Because if you were just to look at this inside of a script, you'd be very confused having to just like go through, see what's being connected, what's not being connected and things like that, uh, or looking at it inside of the Explorer. I think it's definitely a lot better if you had a visual representation like this. Uh, so that you can understand this. I definitely struggled with this a little bit when I first learned about this, but uh, struggling through just to like learn how this stuff works will definitely be beneficial for you in the long run. And that is just something I recommend. And I hope you're able to take away a lot of information from this video and you found this to be extremely, extremely valuable. Once again, I hope this video helped you a lot. Um, there are some things in this video that I did not go over, like being able to call up somebody else that's inside of the server, like if you had a walkie talkie or if you had a phone, you can have a phone and you can call up somebody else, like another player who's on the other side of the world, and you can hear them through the phone, which I think that's also very cool. But I'm not gonna go over how to do that inside of this video, um, but I'm just throwing out more examples of the possibilities of what you can do with this new audio API. Once again, this audio API is in beta, so I don't think it's fully so I don't think it's released to the public right now, but I highly recommend going through and experimenting with this new API because there's so many new possibilities you can do with everything that 
this API has to offer now. So if you really liked this video, then I encourage you to like this video and also share it to other people who you think might also find this sort of stuff to be fascinating or just or just something that uh, your friends would want to learn about. Um, but also subscribe because I'm gonna be having more videos like this in the future. So if you really liked it, then be sure to be on the lookout for that. Um, my Discord server is in the description. So if you want to meet other like-minded developers, then you can do that as well. Um, but that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. And with that being said, I will see you in the next episode. Take care.